In the last year, I developed a bad habit of wasting my mornings. I woke up late and inconsistent, started the day off by distracting myself, and skipped a lot of the habits that would have been really good for me. It's just, I tried developing and finding the perfect morning routine in the past. It's just that it never really fit to my own lifestyle. But I knew something had to change. I was lacking structure, I was feeling behind, I was wasting so much time. And after watching more than 30 videos about morning routines, reading all of those books and a couple of articles, I finally found a system that anyone can use to customize their own perfect morning routine. Now the first part of the system and the first takeaway came from this book, The Miracle Morning. And the author said it's normal to wake up feeling sleepy and a bit sluggish, especially if you try to wake up a bit earlier, which is something we'll touch upon later. And what most people do then is they hit snooze and snooze and snooze. And like a quote said in the book, kind of saying, I hate waking up so much, I'm doing it over and over again. However, what he mentioned is a bulletproof wake-up strategy. What the author does, he wakes up with a smile, he makes the bed, goes to the bathroom, washes his face, brushes his teeth just to do something simple and to wake up, and then does like a little bit of exercise like jumping jacks. What your wake-up ritual looks like, completely up to you. Andrew Huberman, famous psychologist, suggests to go outside for a walk and get some sun. Some people directly go to exercise, some people take a warm shower, some people brush their teeth. The only thing that I would be a bit careful with is drinking coffee. <laughs> now, drinking coffee is totally fine, many people do it, but a lot of research and a lot of articles and books mentioned that when you drink coffee right away in the morning, it can lead to you feeling sluggish on the afternoon. So what actually most people do, they drink a cold glass of water, kind of hydrates them, and only then, 15 minutes after, they drink the first cup of coffee, which can help a lot. And if you only implement that, a wake-up ritual, if you do that, you already mastered 50% of your morning routine. But just as the wake-up ritual starts your morning routine, the book actually started my research phase, and I went to those morning journals, which are actually super cool, because there's kind of one page of daily journals, and then one page of uh, recommendations. But the main thing that this book taught me for the system is that your morning routine starts the night before. And this can be something super simple. Like, of course you can perfect, you can go one hour earlier to bed, you can make the room more cold, all of those things, again, those are all listed there. But if you just prepare a tiny bit what you're going to do next day, you put a cold glass of water next to you, you kind of prepare everything for your wake-up ritual, maybe you already put out some clothing, even though this step is optional, it can already directly bring you a big step forward to actually keeping to that wake-up ritual. Which brings us to the meat, uh, the big part of the morning routine, the actual routine. And this is also the main part that I wanted to make it very personalized, very different. Because you can see all those successful people have completely different routines. They wake up at different times, some people go for a workout, some people go outside, some people just had to shower coffee and get off to work. There's so many variations possible. And after looking through all those things, I could see that there's actually five different routines that you can do. Now the first one I call the nice and simple. And this one, you wake up, we talk about that a bit later, then you do your wake up ritual, and then you do only one, maximum two habits, and the morning routine is done. For instance, who's doing that is Elon Musk. He wakes up, takes a shower, drinks a coffee, heads to work, right? Super fast, super simple, super effective, but also very easy to keep. Now, the second type of morning routine I found was I call the flexible. And the flexible basically is wake up ritual, one or two cornerstone habits you do every time. It doesn't really matter when, at least as long as you do them. And then sneaked in, you can throw in more morning routine aspects. Sometimes you read, sometimes you journal, sometimes you go for a walk, sometimes you go for a run, sometimes you, oh, there's so many things you do. You, uh, you do the mo most important task of the day and you can keep very flexible and you can try it many different things and maybe through this build your own morning routine. Now the third type of morning routine I call the win the day. And that's those type of morning routines that are crazy long, where they wake super early up, and basically before 11 a.m. have done everything to already have won the day. They already had two time blocks of work, exercised, meditated, went for a walk, had a nutritious breakfast, and two smoothies and a protein shake. 
a lot of things. I don't know how many people watching can attach to that, maybe like a variation form of that, but basically that you're able to win the day before 11 a.m. Now the fourth type of morning routine, and now you can see, you can still combine them, right? But I call it a difficult habit. For instance, for me, I really struggle with making meditation a consistent part of my day. But if I put it right in the morning routine, you can notice that there's no way I'm not gonna do it. The morning routine is the most consistent part of the day. The morning routine is also the part where you have the most amount of willpower. And it's the time of the day when you have the least other commitments. So if you wake up and you make one, again, maybe two problem habits, the core, and you just do them in the morning, that can be something to, yeah, you already done your two habits, checked off, ready to start the day. And again, you can combine this and make this your nice and simple, or you kind of combine it with the flexibility, try out many different things, and then kind of come back to those systems and choose. And the last one I call the set the tone. And this one basically means, uh, and it's something that Lana Blakely touched upon, she does not really have a morning routine, because she men mentions that the morning routine sets the tone of the day. And for her, sometimes she's very stressed and she keeps it very light, the morning routine. Sometimes she's falling ahead and then uh, in the morning routine, she's a bit more strict for a week and starts working. It's somehow a variation of the flexible, but even more flexibility and just completely depending on what happens in the day. So now we have an evening routine, we sleep, it's recommended to always sleep eight hours and we wake up. And the big question, when? <laughs> And if you look at all the successful people, you can see some people waking up at 3.45, you can see some people waking up at 10, some at 7, some at 8, some with an alarm, some with no alarm. So the wake up time really doesn't matter because it's so personalized. It depends on your goals and your lifestyle and your ambitions. But again, I would categorize them into three main criteria. If you're able to have like a set time when you go to bed, or you're able to go to bed at a decent time, it can actually be great to not have a dedicated wake up time, maybe something to keep consistent, right? Keep consistent going to bed and waking up. But if you do your wake up ritual, get started in your main routines, done, nice. <laughs> it doesn't work for me though, because I tend to get distracted in the evenings. I don't really get going. Unless I have like a set morning routine time, then I kind of know, oh, I have to go to bed. I go to bed, I get enough sleep, ready to start the day, which is the second part, set an alarm. Now the third type of wake up comes from the 5am club or the people who wake up super early and there the idea is that if you want to be part of the top 5% people you have to be willing to do what 95% of the people are not. And if you wake up super early and dedicate yourself to it, it can actually lead to massive results, right? But it requires a different commitment and it has some drawbacks for me like I, I miss the social aspect so I moved my wake up time to something seven, which is more humane. I can still go out in the evening, sometimes go out later, still wake up at seven and no, no problem, nothing harmed. <laughs> yeah, I hope this was valuable to you. I hope you learned a lot. And if you like those type of videos, it summarize a lot of information into one short video, then you can watch this video next. Thank you for watching, until next time.